What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the Space Technician. Grab yourself a space latte, because today, we're deep diving into Sierra Space's crazy inflatable module testing. That's right, they just built a giant inflatable space habitat structure, then blew it up on purpose. Here's why that's actually a really good thing. But before we get into that, if you're new here, click that subscribe button and ring the bell to journey into space and the technology that's pushing the final frontier. Now, let's see what's up with that inflatable space habitat called life. Remember, strapping in is optional, but recommended. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty of Sierra's new hotness, let's take a quick history trip back to the 1960s, when the idea of inflatable space stations first started percolating. The original OG concept came from Goodyear, with basically a giant donut-shaped balloon design. Certainly an A for effort. But the legendary Werner von Braun himself was a bit skeptical at the time, and rightfully so. Back then, our grasp of ultra-robust space fabrics was way more limited. There were too many open questions around the structural integrity and durability compared to traditional rigid metallic builds. Sorry, Goodyear, no space donut for you. Luckily, though, the basic concept they originated still has loads of merit. It was just a bit too ahead of its time given the material science and engineering knowledge then. Flash forward to today, however, and wow, have we come a long way in those years. After decades of hardcore materials R&D across the whole space industry, we now have an incredible array of advanced composites, high-performance fabrics, and innovative manufacturing methods at our disposal. Like, say that Vectrin woven fabric that gets over five times stronger than steel when pressurized. How rad is that? It almost seems like sci-fi stuff, but it's very real. So, in summary, Goodyear didn't have the sheer fabric bossness we do now. But props for the foresight, and their early initiative is finally getting its spiritual successor in Sierra's state-of-the-art life module. All right, with that history detour out of the way, let's get back to the insane demo Sierra just pulled off. That brings us to today, where thanks to all that material science progression, we now have an incredibly badass grip on high-performance space fabrics. I'm talking cutting-edge woven polymer composites and advanced flexible ceramics that are stupidly strong, yet incredibly lightweight and foldable. These futuristic materials have breathed new life into inflatable structure dreams, and leading that revival charge is Sierra Space, coming in hot with their life module, aka the Large Integrated Flexible Environment. Oh yeah! Now we're talking! Just look at the gorgeous renders of this beast. Life rolls off the tongue nicely, but let me tell you, this thing more than lives up to the name. I'm talking BDE, Big Dome Energy. Standing taller than a six-story building at over 18 feet high and stretching wider than a basketball court at over 27 feet in diameter, life absolutely towers when fully expanded. And it sports a spacious interior volume exceeding most two-floor luxury penthouses. Yet, thanks to being inflatable, it can squash down small enough to fit inside a standard payload rocket fairing for affordable launch costs, making life a hugely versatile space architecture game changer. All right, all right, but enough hype beasting about its crazy compact launch state. Let's see this radically gigantic habitat in its full glory. Fully expanded, one life module spans a gargantuan 27 feet in diameter. For non-metric folks, that's wider than two city transit buses parked end to end, and it towers 18 feet high, making it taller than a giraffe. Accounting for headroom, that nets out to over 285 cubic meters of palatial interior space. For a little context, that's more than double the habitable volume of a modern six-bedroom luxury mega-mansion. And here's the real mind-blower. 
just three of these interstellar inflatable apartments combined exceed the entire current livable area on the International Space Station. Seriously, do y'all realize how gravitationally insane that is? We could utterly triple the human habitat capacity in orbit with just these game-changing modules. I gotta catch my breath here for a sec and let that sink in. This is a radically unprecedented amount of pressurized real estate we're talking about. And the genius is by launching the modules deflated, even existing mid-lift rockets like Falcon 9 or Atlas V can get these babies up there. Then, once safely in zero-g, it's as easy as one touch inflate, baby! Kapowie! Unfurl that domicile, Sierra space style. Then, just kick back and float around your palatial new space digs. Absolutely game changer! Now, with all that internal real estate potential, you might be wondering, can this fancy inflatable actually hold atmosphere safely? Excellent question, perceptive viewer. When you're encapsulating that much raw cubic footage, structural integrity is everything. And there's only one way to truly validate the robustness of a complex prototype like life. Extreme testing, baby! So Sierra loaded up the module and hauled it over to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center test facilities. Why there versus Sierra's own labs? Simple. NASA has beastly high-capacity pressure pumps for simulating extreme launch and orbital conditions. We're talking bleeding-edge hydraulics that can pump tens of thousands of pounds per square inch. Sierra was essentially like, hey NASA, mind if we use your epically insane test infrastructure to safely blow up our next-gen habitat in your faces? To which NASA, being the homies they are, was like, uh, hell yeah bro. Let's do this! So, the stage was set to inflate this puppy until catastrophic explosive failure, all in a controlled environment to capture crucial burst limit data for analysis. Let's go! All right, folks, the moment of truth has arrived. Life module fully inflated. Check. NASA's blistering hydraulic pressure system primed and aimed. Check. Cameras rolling capture every angle in delicious slow motion. Oh yeah, check. This is what it's all been leading up to people, purposely detonating this inflatable prototype in the name of science. Now remember, NASA standards say any orbital habitat pressure vessel needs to handle, at minimum, 60 psi before bursting. And that includes a nice 4x safety buffer margin baked in for good measure, too. Could Sierra's crazy life module surpass that, and then some? Were flexible, soft goods structures truly ready for primetime space deployment? Time to find out. John, hit the pressure sequence. Three, two, one. Engage the pumps to max. The PSI ticker starts steadily rising as the beefy hydraulics get to work. 30 PSI, 40 PSI, it's holding, 50, 60. The 4X minimum mark achieved, 70 PSI and still going strong. Wait, 75? Is it really going to… it burst! Violently exploding in a thunderous yet beautiful cascade of rupturing Vectrin layers. Sierra Space absolutely dominated the NASA baseline requirements by over 25%, and the team triumphantly cheered at the awesome spectacle unfolding on the monitors. Sweet, breathtaking success. Taste the pressure rainbow, life module. With such incredible overperformance validated, the fundamentals clearly have what it takes to support future operational habitats. Sandy, my dude. Uncork that orbital champagne, because we have liftoff, baby! Now sure, obviously these specific life test articles aren't inhabitable anymore post-explosive decompression. Can't just slap some space duct tape over those tattered shreds and call it good. But not to worry, Sierra totally planned for sacrificial destruction 
from the very start. This was never about manufacturing final flight habitats. They have separate production development pipelines for those babies. No, no. This demo was all about pushing experimental units to utter oblivion in the name of two critical things. One, precisely measuring maximum structural failure points. And two, capturing awesome slow motion destruction footage for us. Gotta feed the YouTube matrix after all. But in all seriousness, the key data they can derive from timed pressurization to catastrophic burst events is absolutely invaluable. Seeing exactly when, where, and how the fabric layers, seals, and interfaces give way under literally tons of PSI force per square inch allows Sierra's engineers to further optimize weave patterns, shape configurations, filler compounds, and a ton more design factors. We're talking fine-tuning the recipe to enhance safety margins by double-digit percentage points. And with such massively positive results already, any further improvements will cement life as a true flight-proven technology. Heck, at this pace, I bet if they strapped some boosters onto the test article before it blew up, the dang thing could have launched itself into orbit. Well, briefly at least, before coming apart at the seams. Still though, talk about validation to keep aggressively pushing forward. The data speaks for itself. Life is alive and thriving. Now. With such exceptional structural validation complete, the possibilities are endless for what we could actually do with these living expansive habitats. I mean, sure, attach a few of these monsters together, and bam, instant two-story space mansion condo replacements for ISS, with gorgeous views of Earth to enjoy with your space breakfast in the morning too. Not too shabby at all. But why stop at just general habitat replacements? These are entire self-contained worlds we could create. Fully customized inner space platforms tailored to virtually any activity that benefits from microgravity and vacuum. I'm talking about radical sci-fi concepts, like sealed rotating hydroponic gardens to sustain deep space crews with fresh produce. We could have expansive orbital factories churning out next-gen polymers and biomed compounds in possible to manufacture on Earth. And I don't know about you, but between the promise of space greenhouses, off-world industry, and floating habitats, I'd say the future for Sierra's life technology is looking pretty darn bright. And for you next-gen space station aficionados out there, life is already slated for a super high-profile application, Orbital Reef. For those unaware, Orbital Reef is an upcoming commercial space station spearheaded by Sierra's partner, Blue Origin. We're talking bridges between modules with sweet zero-G lounges, space hotel rooms tourists can rent by the week, the whole future chic nine yards, and supplying the main beefy expandable habitat space? You guessed it, Sierra's tried and tested life technology, of course. Life and other inflatable add-ons are planned to account for almost half of Orbital Reef's eventual volume capacity. We're talking bona fide cities in the clouds, people. Mash up a luxury resort skyscraper with SpaceX's Starship. Stick it in Leo, and that's the aim. Now, imagine such grand stations not just as national flag-flying endeavors, but as bustling ports of commerce. Inflatable modules made to order for lease by industrial operators and research groups. A microgravity manufacturing firm renting an entire module turned factory for polymer production. Pharma giants running orbital laboratories synthesizing never before dreamed medical compounds. With private stations like Reef on the rise and expandable buildouts lowering launch and construction barriers. Well, let's just say Sierra and their life ecosystem seem perfectly positioned to enable the rapidly approaching orbital economy. Absolutely wild growth ahead. All right, everyone, that's our epic dive into Sierra's crazy successful inflatable module testing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and ring the bell for more sweet space content. This is the Space Technician signing off for now and 
I'll see you, Space Cowboys, in the next one.